Very good morning. Hope you're having a fantastic day today. Day 11. Yes, it is day 11. Um, I'm, I'll, I'm also going to be bringing you some highlights of day 12. This is all of the Karen Reed, um, Karen Reed murder trial. We have been following this now for the last uh, three months. Uh, I actually picked it up from um, the blogger himself. Um, his name is uh, Turtle Boy. You'll find him on YouTube and you can get a full update of everything that's been going on. He's the one that actually initiated this uh, case publicized worldwide. Sound for me. Hope you guys can hear me okay. Hope you can. Can you hear me better? If you are, just give me a thumbs up. Okay, my name is Hartley. The station is, um, or should I say, the, the YouTube channel is called Crime Vlog Weekly. Okay, as I said, we've been bringing you this um, highlights of the trial of um, the Boston cop. His name is uh, John O'Keefe. He died on the, well, believed to have died on the 29th of um, uh, January 2022. The case is now currently um, in, in trial, in court over there in our Boston, Massachusetts. Um, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> from my end, I, I'm, I'm hoping this case can actually be thrown out sometime before the end. They said it's going to go on for another two or three months, but um, there's so many ups and downs and um, uh, nothing is adding up. So far, we haven't seen one ounce of evidence that Karen Reed has actually caused this particular death of her boyfriend. She seems to be a very loving person and that was corroborated, corroborated by um, many of the defense um, uh, witnesses because um, so far the prosecution haven't um, brought their witnesses as of yet but all the prosecution witnesses has um, actually said she seemed a nice person and one or two tried to dis distance themselves from knowing her they've got their reasons but um overall probably 80 or 90 percent yes um, she and um, her boyfriend seem to have had a very loving relationship so um so far there's no motive there's no motive why she should have killed him or um, so far also there haven't been any uh anything to show that there has been an accident um or an accident that uh, happened uh, caused by her. So the prosecution is actually saying she drove approximately 25 miles an hour in reverse, um, knocked her boyfriend over and left him on the sidewalk. This is what was said by the prosecution. They haven't proved it yet. They, we haven't seen the evidence that this has been done yet. They're up to date, this is between um, day one up to day nine and 10. Um, there's absolutely no evidence yet that any of this actually happened. There's a lot of hearsay and this one, this one said this and this one said that, or she said this and she said that, but there's definitely no evidence. Also the, uh, the cops, um, the police made us, has made a sloppy, very sloppy, um, investigation. They didn't take photographs on the night. They didn't take photographs of where the body was lying. Um, they did not take evidence from the people in the house until hours later, sometimes weeks later, and in other cases, uh, two years later. So, um, it's a very confusing case. Nothing that does this, as I said, nothing leads to Karen Reed, um, being guilty of this. Uh, everything seems to be a cover up. It looks like a cover up. It smells like a cover-up, and it could well be a cover-up. At the moment, she's charged with um, second-degree murder. Uh, firstly, she was charged for hit and run, but that was, the charges was up since then. And here we are. We are now at day 11. And finally, finally, we're now um, uh, 
getting evidence from those people that were in the house. As if you've been following the case, they've been at, on that night, there were at least 11 to 13 people in the house. Um, Brian Albert and daughters, son in law, other police officers whose friends of Brian Albert. And the defense claims that these are the people who's um, making allegations that Karen Reed was responsible for his death. And most of all, they're saying that uh, Karen Reed's boyfriend, who's John O'Keefe, did not enter that home. So far, everyone is saying that. Although there's been a couple of mistakes, a couple of slip of the tongues, at least I do know that one person did make a slip and mention about John in that home. So we're going to hear more about that uh, we, as the time goes on over the next few weeks, if this case doesn't get thrown out before. Also, the lead, the lead, um, the lead, uh, investigating officer his name is proctor he is on the investigation we believe by the fbi at present for the handling of this particular case we haven't heard much because as you know a lot of these um a lot of these uh situations they kept kept on the cover but my thing is why are they continuing with the travel with the with the trial they should not be continuing this travel with this trial um, if there is such a cover-up going on and misleads and whatnot, unless the FBI is trying to get as much information as they can via this trial, but you know, at the same time they're putting um, Karen Reed under extreme, extreme um, stress and problems. She has actually had to leave her job, had to find money to get herself out on bail, also to find money for very, very, very expensive lawyers. As you know, one of them is a big top lawyer from um, Los Angeles. He's been um, uh, to fly over to the East Coast to deal with this case. Also, Yanetti, who's a local local lawyer, but very powerful. He's also handling the situation. And they've got, obviously, lots of other people who's helping out on this case. So here we are. Um, as we, we are saying and we're hearing a lot of this uh, cover-up by the police. Um, I thought it would be interesting to give you just some of the uh, some of the comments that um, people are saying saying regarding this case. Okay, we got, this one is by Sean Marie. This is this is general general comments that's going around um, across the internet about this particular case. As you know, this case has gone worldwide. Uh, down there in Australia, as we know, it's going on. They're watching it quite closely. Also, South Africa and um, Europe, England, Canada, and of course the USA. This one's by Sean Marie. I do feel like Higgins. Higgins is the um, one of the early investigators. Uh, he's based in the local town called Canton. He's based there. Um, he's one of the investigators who was actually. He's one of the policemen, as I should say, who was actually in the house on that particular night that John O'Keefe, a fellow uh, police officer, officer died. Um, did I say in the house? Well, we're not sure if he was in the house, but it's led to believe that um, uh, from the prosecution, they're saying that uh, John O'Keefe did not enter the house. But um, uh, as we know, this other officer, his name is Higgins, so uh, he's a colleague. He was actually in the house of the party that night, this after party. Continuing back with uh, Sean Murray, I'm rambling a bit. I do feel like Higgins beat him along with Albert. They mean um, uh, um, Brian Albert, who's the homeowner. He says, I do feel like Higgins beat him along with uh, Albert assisting and the cops covered it the, and the cops covered it. They had to know how the resources to do it. I don't think his uh, death was initially intentional, but it went too far. Yeah, um, I think I think a lot of people agree with Sean Marie there. Um, this wasn't an intention on the night to kill anyone, of course not. Um, but something happened. <clears throat> there was a lot of drinking on the night. Um, 
it was drinking now because i think the brian albert seemed to have been drinking early from early afternoon right through up to late late morning um and previously he was drinking um at uh, some event he went to previous before that and they also sh showed clips in the bar where he was um demonstrating his skills in um having to be able to defend himself if he ever got into a fight or having to deal with criminals himself. Bearing in mind, he's also a police officer who's in a high profile job of catching criminals and things like that. So, um, yes, Sean Marie's got, got a very good point there saying, um, I do feel like Higgins and Higgins beat him along with Albert, which is um, Brian Albert assisting, <coughs> assisting and the cops covered it up. They had to know how resources to do it. They had to they had to know how to do it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, what she's saying is that as a policeman, um, you know how to cover up if you need to. And she thinks that um, this is what actually happened. As I said, that's um, one of the comments that's going to be going around and that's been um, multiplied by many other comments I've seen across the internet. Um, what, we else, what else have we got here? So you say, cops and drugs, no way, like Judy, Judy, Judy here. Not sure what that meant. Um, okay, let's see if we can find a decent uh, comment here. I'm just, just sort of running through them. <laughs> Someone that's actually watching the case um, <clears throat> on a daily basis, Celeb Smith says, we need to send the brother some shirts. He wears the same same um, same clothes every day. Yeah, that's the brother of uh, John O'Keefe. Uh, he's sitting in court. He's been there every day so far, and uh, it looks like he wears the same shirt every day. So um, that's a comment by <laughs> Celeb Smith about the brother of John O'Keefe. Okay, um, there's another comment here by Debbie Rizinger. Debbie Rizinger, another comment across the internet. And she says, this bothers me. You would think that, um, you would think they would have some consolidating, but John's family shunned Karen immediately. Yeah, it seems at the beginning of after what happened, this is before all the uh, court evidence and court statements came in, they actually turn against Karen immediately, believing that um, she was totally responsible for her boyfriend's death. But as you see, they're in court every day and uh, they're hearing uh, s stuff or evidence that they haven't heard before. So the full truth is actually coming out and they have lightened <clears throat> their feelings about uh, Karen. They're not sure at the moment uh, that Karen was responsible for his death and the whole case looks that way the whole definitely the whole case looks that way um, as I said we haven't seen one ounce of evidence yet no more than a hearsay by um, one of the first responders that she's she heard someone said um, she heard Karen said um, I did it I hit him I hit him I hit him so um, <clears throat> that hasn't been proven as yet either so we're still waiting for them to um, get some solid evidence that uh, Karen Reed was responsible for some hit and run type of uh, death there. Um, okay, let's see if what else we can get here. Okay. Okay, another one, Jessica Hill on the internet again, she's saying, I've been watching this um, these case from the beginning and she says, I barely even heard Karen's name. They care more about defending themselves than blaming Karen. Absolutely true. Um, as it, Yes, they've started um, interviewing or shall I say, uh, questioning or cross-questioning the people in the homes. As I said, there were up, up to 11 to 13 of them. And it's all about defending themselves, you know, uh, 
trying to prove where they were on the night or who wasn't there or who was there and what time they came in or what time they don't want to say that they came and things like that. Um, so there's some sort of cover-up going on. We don't know exactly what the cover-up, but we do know, know that they've been colluding. All the people in the home have been colluding with each other and someone's um, seem to be in charge of this um, collusion. <laughs> They all seem to be talking, I, don't if, well, I doubt if they'll talk on the phone, but they, they're talking to each other somewhere, somehow, and trying to get their stories straight. Luckily, we've got apps and phone, phone um, not phone conversations, but phone data to prove who spoke to who at what time and so forth. And this is where the truth is beginning to... Um, this is where the truth is begin, beginning to come true. So, um, yes, uh, not much talk about Karen, but there's lots of defending themselves of what they were doing on the night. So, uh, I'm not sure why, why all that's happening. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's exciting. It's getting very exciting, <laughs> I must say. The Okay, yeah, um, getting back to some of the uh, comments that's uh, running across the internet. Um, this one's by JustGuy259. Um, he says, why was more blood not found with the body? Not on the snow. Not on the snow yard. Or on the road. Where is the blood? Good questions. Absolutely good questions, because what we've seen so far is spots. I think they were showing something like six spots of blood in um, in on the snow. Um, that's if it was blood, but we for the for the damp for the for the injuries that was on John O'Keefe's body, uh, there was hardly any blood. So was that a secondary crime scene? So you know, I'm not an officer, I'm not a police officer, I'm just a citizen like um, like you, and um, I ask myself the same questions. So for what I've saw, I've been following the case all the way through, and I saw drops of blood in the snow, not pools of blood, where you would expect such damages, especially at the back of his head. It wasn't pools of blood, so maybe this is a secondary um, crime scene, but we would like to know where's the uh, where is the first crime, crime scene? Um, the defense seemed to be thinking or leading the way to get into the um, into the basement. They believe that something happened in that basement uh, and they're trying to get this out of the witnesses who's been at the house. But there seem to be some sort of cover-up. No one wants to talk openly. No one wants to say exactly who was in the house at the time. At the given times, there's everyone's throwing different stories, um, and there's beginning to be lies. Um, there's beginning to be untruths. Let's put it that way. There's lots of untruths so far, and the jury is definitely watching all this and listening to all this. So um, yes, uh, so that was from just just the guy two five nine. Why was more blood not found at the crime scene? Um, and I'm sure the jury will be asking themselves the same thing. It says here, Shane, poor Karen wants to know what's going on. Yes, she definitely won't knows, no, no, wants to know what's going on. Also, she's losing money. She, she's got a fantastic job. She had a fantastic job earning, uh, I think, probably a couple hundred thousand per year. And she's had to give that job up to deal with this case over the past two and a half years. And... So it's been, um, it's been like that. Okay, let me see if there's another um, interesting comment. Okay, there's another uh, situation. This is by Jamie Butler, another internet um, person says, not guilty people don't hire lawyers to represent them if they're not being charged. They continue to say free Karen. Um, what it is, one of the witnesses uh, actually had to consult 
his lawyer before he gave evidence or while he was giving evidence in court. Um, me, myself, I, I thought that was strange, but, you know, I'm not a liar. I don't know the full law, what goes on there, but he actually wanted to consult his lawyer before he actually uh, gave evidence on a certain part of uh, what went on, and the judge allowed it, so he was able to consult his lawyer, and then they continued with the case. Um, so that was... Um, Jamie Butler says, not guilty people don't hire lawyers to represent them if they're not being charged. Absolutely true there. Uh, someone says, someone called the judge's manager. Yes, the judge is managing this case in the favor that she wants to. <laughs> She's um, sustaining most of the uh, questions that's asked by the defense um she's even helping out the defense when he doesn't um when he doesn't object she'll come in to stop the defense from asking certain questions i'm not sure why but that's what's happening if you watch it watch the case you'll see that that's um that's been happening right from the beginning from day one Obviously, she, there's lots of evidence that she didn't want to come into the case, but as things went on and certain names was called or certain uh, evidence was given, it opened the way for the defense to be able to um, prove that that person was either right or wrong. And that's how lots of the evidence is actually coming out by mistakes, by um, uh, people who's giving... Um, giving evidence okay i'm actually looking to see if there's an, another decent uh comment which makes sense sense in here uh, buh, buh, buh. Let's see. okay what's it say i should put myself on the open market as a cure so it's a Mr. McFerg, 240, this lawyer should put himself on the open market as a cure for insomnia. Yeah, he, he seems to be a booing, a booing um, attorney there. Also, it says, say, these, def uh, these, these defense attorneys are learning on the job. Don't know what they mean by that because those are two top, two top attorneys, one from... Boston, Massachusetts, and the other one from Los Angeles, who has uh, defended many high-profile uh, cases over there in Los Angeles, and won. Yeah, so he's a, he is a lawyer that don't don't lose his cases. So, um, okay, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna get into some of the um, we're gonna get into some of the testimony. Ms. Albert, I'd like to go back to a discussion of Katie McLaughlin. Okay. Yesterday, I asked you a four-word question, and that question was, who is Katie McLaughlin? Do you recall that question? I do. Uh, you would agree with me that your response was not, uh, she's a firefighter. Correct. Your response was not, she's a friend. Correct. Your response was not, I've known her for years. Well, I sort of alluded to that when I said that I've known her since high school. Right. Uh, your, your response was that she was somebody that you knew in high school, correct? I said that I went to high school with her and she's my same age. We graduated the same year. Right. Yes. So you referenced high school, correct? Yes. All right. You would agree with me that you've seen her several times since high school, correct? Yes. You have hung out in the same group with her several times since high school, correct? Yes. And you graduated high school in 2014? Yes. Uh, it is now 2024? Yes. Your contact with Katie McLaughlin has been fairly consistent over the years in that it continued at least un until 2021, correct? I would agree with that, although it was far and few between, but is that throughout because, the years, yes. It, do you say that because the photographs are far and few between? Objection. Sustained. 
All right. Uh, you would uh, agree with me that there was not a three-year period prior to Jan January 29th of 2022 where you didn't see Katie McLaughlin at all, correct? A three-year period? Right. I I can't say 100% yes to that, but I wouldn't be surprised if I had seen her at some point in time over the past couple of years and before John O'Keefe's passing. Yeah, I w Seeing her a couple of times, does that mean that maybe you bumped into her and said hello? It would mean that we would be in the same place at the same time, not something that I reached out and invited her to in any way, shape or form, but you know, again, we have mutual friends, so I, I, I would not be surprised if I went somewhere and she happened to be there as well. Okay, uh, and it would have been a surprise to you that she showed up at whatever place you were at in those three years. Is that your testimony? No, no, it would not have been a surprise to me. You would have known in advance that Katie McLaughlin was going to be at the same place that you were in advance. Not necessarily, but ever in those three years, Jackson. Uh, isn't it true that only eight months before <laughs> January 29th of 2022, you and Katie McLaughlin were at a baby shower together? Jackson, do you know that? Yes, go ahead and answer. Yes, we did. You were. Uh, whose baby shower was it? It was a mutual friend of ours. What's her name? Her name's Alyssa. And how many people were at that baby shower? I can't say for sure. I mean, it was Alyssa's family right. and a bunch of friends. I can't put a number on it. The, the, the friends uh, all gathered together and took a photo together with uh, the woman having the baby shower, correct? Objection. Yeah, what this is... Uh, um... McLaughlin is one of the first responders who who attended attended the uh, on the early morning when John O'Keefe's uh, body was found, and she, out of everyone, she's the one who said that she heard um, she heard uh, so many names. She heard Karen Reed say, "I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. Did I hit him?" Uh, those this is what was said by McLaughlin in the early month. And then she also referred that to a couple of the other um, police officers on that morning. Uh, she actually um, gave evidence that she has no connections with anyone at the house on the earlier um one, uh, one of the earlier trials. It has now come to light that she is um, friends with this uh, young lady that's on trial now. I think I think her name is Caitlin, Caitlin Albert. Uh, they're friends, they've been out together, they've taken photographs together and the defense, the defense has actually come up with uh, photos of the two of them together. So it's, they're actually pointing out that there seem to be some lying going on or untruths going on by Caitlin Albert um, and also McLaughlin. So uh, where the defense is going, they're trying to clear that evidence where it was said, where um, McLaughlin said that uh, Kat, uh, that Karen Reed said, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. So this is where we're at. And the defense obviously doing a fantastic job here. And I'm sure they're going to, um, uh, get it pointed pointed out in the right direction so uh, let's see if we can get back to um, the continued evidence by Kathleen Was there a photo taken? I believe so okay. you were in that photo correct yes who was standing next to you I don't have it in front of me um, okay if you saw the photo would that refresh your memory yeah may I approach yes I'm showing you what has been just, just Sorry. I was just going to identify it as S for identification for the record, Your Honor. I'm showing you what's been marked S. Uh, could you take a look at that and look up at me when you're done? May I approach? Yes. 
having reviewed that photograph, Ms. Albert, uh, who is standing next to you? One of my friends is on the left of me, and Katie McLaughlin is on the right of me. Oh, she's right next to you in that photo, correct? Yes, she is. That was in June of 2021, correct? Yes. So if somebody testified that you hadn't seen each other in three years prior to January 29th of 2022, that would be wrong, right? Objection. Thank And with regard to the contact that you've had with her in terms of group events, uh, you would agree with me that it wasn't just day trips that you took with her, correct? Correct. Um, you've also gone on road trips with her, correct? I've gone away on trips that she was with. I didn't <laughs> drive with her or go with her or invite her, but she has been there, yeah. Okay, and what road trips have you taken overnight where you and Katie McLaughlin have been together since high school? Objection. Sustained. You've gone to Maine with Katie McLaughlin, have you not? Objection. So we need a time frame, Mr. Yannick. Again, the um, the judges keeps trying to block block things out uh, from the jury hearing, and obviously this uh, witness, um, Caitlin, is trying to distance herself from uh, knowing this um, McLaughlin person who was there on the early morning. Who is she, who? As I said, she's a, one of the first responders, and she, as I said, give evidence to the grand jury that um, she heard Karen Reed said, um, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. Um, so it's all proving that there's something, something went on in that house behind me. And there's at least eight to 10 people who is <laughs> colluding together uh, to get uh, Karen Reed sent and put away for life because it is a murder trial so um you know uh, she is being found out and uh, she's not going to be happy well she's not happy she's uncomfortable Nettie, not just sure years ago. since since high school you've gone to maine with katie mclaughlin correct objection oh did you go to maine with her i did and the the year would have been like 2015 or 2016. If I suggested it was July of 2016, would that make sense? That would sound about right, yeah. Uh, and uh, while you were in Maine, there were seven of you in a hot tub together, correct? Objection. Sustained. Uh, you were in a hot tub with Katie McLaughlin in Maine, correct? Objection. Sustained. Let me approach you on. Yes. To me, that's a yes or no question. I don't know why the uh, prosecution is objecting and the, the judge is agreeing not to let that evidence uh, come in. You know, they were together. He's already proven that she's lied a couple of times. So this is more untruth she's bringing up. She's distancing herself from being a close friend of uh, McLaughlin. And McLaughlin was, did do the same thing. So, you know, the, you know, this person's, Karen Reed is on trial for her life, let's put it this way. So, um, surely let the evidence come out. Now, I think the, it looks like the, they've called another sidebar again. And obviously this is because uh, the defense lawyers are putting pressure on the, onto Caitlin to prove that you know, she is a good friend of uh, McLaughlin. Because, um, as I said, McLaughlin said uh, that Karen said, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. Yeah, so that needs to be cleared up. So McLaughlin's either telling lies um, because she's a friend of the Albert family. Uh, 
Um, you'd mentioned that you'd been to Maine with Katie McLaughlin in 2016. Uh, where was it in Maine? I'm not sure the exact town. Right. It, probably four hours away. I'm not sure how long it took to get up there. It wasn't 10 minutes away. No. Right? And it wasn't a half hour. No. All right. Uh, it was more than two hours, correct? Maybe. And you drove, correct? Yes. How many days did you spend in Maine? I'm not sure. Maybe two. All right. Uh, so you were up in Maine over a weekend? Yep. Uh, with Katie McLaughlin, correct? Yes, as well as a bunch of other friends. Oh, of course. But the answer to my question is, you were with Katie McLaughlin, correct? Yes. Sustained. Um, how many times have the two of you been to the beach together since high school? Jack. Do you know? If you can answer that, go ahead and answer. I know that we have been to a beach together, but I don't know how many times I would, I could guess. I don't guess. Okay. Next question, Ms. Tina. You said a beach. Does that mean that the two of you uh, only go to one particular beach? No. no. You've gone to multiple beaches with Katie McLaughlin, correct? Not that I can remember. I, I can't remember how many times. I have one memory, but I can't say for sure how many times I've been to a beach with Katie McLaughlin. Okay. Um, if I showed you a photograph of the two of you on a beach together in bikinis, would that refresh your memory? Jackson. CNA, you can show her a photograph. Thank you. Find me a photo. Yes. <coughs> Again, I'm showing you S for identification, one particular photo in S. You take a look at that and look up at me when you're done. Does that refresh your memory? Yep. Um, that particular photo that I showed you from S for identification, what, what beach was that? I don't know the name of the beach. Where was it? I believe the, somewhere in the Cape. And. Uh, Katie McLaughlin is in that photo, correct? Yes, and along with a bunch of other friends. Uh, of course, there are other friends, but you Miss are... Miss Tianetti, please no more. Of course. Of course, you're on. <laughs> um, with, regard, with, with regard to that photo, once again, you are right next to Katie McLaughlin. Were you not right in back of her? She's in front of me, yes, and the mutual friends that I already said that we have are also in the photo. Of course. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> has anybody... So, jurors, I'm going to strike that, of course. Has anybody in this courtroom today asked you about the other mutual friends who were there? Did I ask you today whether there were other mutual friends in that photo? Jackson. Sustain. You added that to your answer, correct? Jackson. Can you answer that? Yes. Who are your college roommates? I, Jackson. I'm sorry. I definitely wish the judge would let the case move on because obviously this girl is trying to avoid answering certain questions. She do not want to show that McLaughlin was a very close friend. And the, the defense have to prove that her that they um their client are not guilty of what they're accusing or all of them are getting together to say that she ran over this body and this has happened and she hit him she said she hit him and that sort of thing the judge needs to let the um case run through i didn't hear the question who were your college roommates oh yeah it's sustained how many college roommates did you have Jackson. Sustained. Fair to say that Katie McLaughlin has been with you and your college roommates. Yes. When was that? There were two college roommates that you and Katie McLaughlin were with, right? I had multiple college roommates at that time, and two of them were the mutual friend that Katie and I share. And in fact, there was an occasion where the, you were in a kitchen with your two college roommates and one other person, correct? Jackson. 
need a time frame or something, Ms. Giannetti? Oh, that was around 2016, was it not? That sounds about right, yes. Okay. Uh, and do you recall which college roommates they were? Objection. Sustained. And someone took a photo of you, your two college roommates, and one other person, correct? Objection. Sustained. In 2016. Objection. Sustained. <clears throat> May we approach? Okay. There you go. Um, <laughs> she keeps looking to the right at, at the Lali. Lali is the um, prosecutor, uh, lawyer. She keeps looking at him, hoping that he would um, call objection. And of course, he does. And then the judge say, move on, sustain. So um, she's been she's been helped out at least 10 times so far since she's uh, started the evidence. I think they're having a little sidebar at the moment. Uh, the judge seemed to be chatting to them to um, get the house in order. Let's put it that way. Yeah, they're having a sidebar, all, all the lawyers. Obviously, the defense want to make sure that he gets the answers from um, Kathleen Albert, but the judge keeps throwing it out, and of course, um, the defense, uh, the the attorney, the uh, the attorney um, for the prosecution, he keeps uh, objecting because he knows he's going to get the help from the <laughs> from the judge. So that seemed to be what's happening all the time. It's a very, very, very biased type type of case, and um, not only me saying that. You know, you, if you read all the comments, you go to whichever channel. You go to across the um, internet, everyone's saying, is the judge allowed to be so biased in such a serious um, case? Yeah, because what's going to happen at the end, even if she was found guilty, there is so many reasons um, to object, well, not object, there's so many reasons to come back later and appeal because there's been bias, there's been things that wasn't let in, there's too, too many too many loose ends that's going on. So um, it's not good to be uh, trying to keep things away from the jury. A case like this, an important case, a murder trial, you know, the jury needs to hear everything because it only takes one of those jury to say, no, I'm not going to um, agree with what the other's saying and they, the case is out. So. If at least if all the evidence is on the table, it's not to say that she's been in trouble and done this before or anything like that. So put all the evidence on the table. Don't hide nothing back. Um, it's like the dog. They were the defense was trying to find where the dog was so they can get some DNA evidence from the dog, and um, uh, the defense held that information back. The information was there out given by the dog owner uh, months and months back yet still they didn't want to pass that information on to the defense so the defense could find a DNA person to check all the DNA details and find out if John O'Keefe was actually scratched those scratches that was on his arm was those scratches from a dog or was it from having a fight or was the scratches from being knocked over at 25 miles an hour um, on a snowy night in um, Canton. Here we go. All right, Coach. Yes. I'm showing you another photo from S for identification, ma'am. Look up at look at that and look up at me when you're done. Who's in that photo? Myself, um, two of my college roommates, and Katie McLaughlin. Okay. So K Katie McLaughlin's the only one in that photo who's not one of your roommates, correct? 
Yes. And uh, was this a situation where she just showed up unexpectedly like all the other times? You had no idea she was going to be there? Objection. Ask the question differently. That It's sustained in that. Thank you, Honor. Did, did you expect, by the way, whose, whose kitchen is that? It was the college house that I lived in. Uh, so your kitchen? The house we were renting, yes. You lived in that kitchen? Yes. And Katie McLaughlin's in your kitchen? Correct. Yes. Uh, who invited Katie that day? Um, the two mutual friends that I lived with. Okay. Uh, certainly, you didn't invite Katie, correct? I did not. Because you're not close friends with her at all, correct? I am not. In fact, you don't really like her very much, do you? Objection. Yeah. 16. You guys were teammates on the track of cross country team back in high school, correct? I don't recall that, actually. I, we could have been. I, I'm not sure. I may approach? Yes. Once again, place S for identification before you, ma'am. If you look at the first page and then the second page. She's definitely under pressure. The defense has definitely got the um, P's and Q's together. They're laying out their case absolutely careful. Yes. Having reviewed those two pages, does that refresh your memory about your teammate, Katie McLaughlin? Yes, it does. And you certainly were teammates in high school, correct? Yes. And you would agree with me that that relationship continued in terms of your contact with her all the way up through 2021, correct? Yes. Um, Your Honor, I would offer the photos that are in S for identification as full exhibits in this trial at this point. Objection. The objection sustained. <coughs> You should put those back up with the clerk, Mr. Nitty. Okay. Sustain, sustain, now, sustain. Uh, you testified that you knew Brian Higgins prior to January 29th of 2022, correct? Yes. Uh, you knew him as a good friend of your father's, correct? Yes. Uh, he arrived at 34 Fairview Road, your parents' home, on January 29th of 2022, after you got there, correct? Again, I, yes, because me and my parents were the first ones inside, from what I remember. Uh, did you see what Brian Higgins drove to get there? I did not. You did not see where he parked his vehicle? Again, now, um, just to catch up so you can catch up. Brian Higgins is a fellow police officer of um, the homeowner, which is also a cop, Boston cop, um, Brian Albert. So um, he's coming into the questioning of Kathleen Albert about um, Brian Higgins, because he's, he's uh, crucial to this complete case right through to um, early morning. And what's his movements and timings and whatnot. So there's going to be a, quite a few questions asked by the uh, defense lawyer about this gentleman. I did not. At some point you saw him inside the home, correct? Yes. And he made it into the kitchen and dining room area where you <clears throat> were, correct? Yes. <clears throat> uh, you agree that at some point, Brian Higgins and your father, Brian Albert, left that area to go to another room, correct? Yes. So it's fair to say there was at least some portion of the night when Brian Higgins and your father were out of your field of vision, correct? I, I don't agree with that because the room that I had seen them go into has an open doorway and you can see right into the family room that 
they were in. Um, so I could actually see them in there. Gotcha. How long were you there when Brian Higgins and your father, Brian Albert, were there? Inside the family room? I'm talking from that, that whole night. Uh, at, when you were at 34 Fairview, mm -hmm. how much time lapsed between the time you first saw Brian Higgins and Brian Higgins left the residence? I, I can't say for sure. Um, if I had to estimate, I'd say an hour and a half. Okay. And so your testimony before this jury is for that full hour and a half, there was no time when Brian Higgins and your father, Brian Albert, were out of your field of vision. Not that I can remember. Now, earlier that evening on Friday, January 28th, uh, you made plans to go out with your mom, Nicole Albert, your aunt, Julie Albert, and your boyfriend, Tristan Morris, correct? Yes. From the beginning of that night, the plan was for Tristan to go home early, correct? Yes. Uh, and that was because he had to get up early to plow or shovel, correct? Yes. Uh, he had to get up really early, correct? Yes. Uh, the plan was for him to shovel or plow at 3 a.m.? He was, from what I recall, he was on standby for like three. It could be, it could have been any time after that. Oh, I see. So uh, it could have been that he had to get up at three or maybe a little bit later, correct? Yes. And it was for that reason that when he was at the waterfall with you, he only had a couple of drinks, correct? From what I remember, yes. And from the beginning of the night, uh, you knew that it was going to be iffy as to whether he would be able to get much sleep at all, correct? It wasn't really something we discussed. Well, the reason he was going home early and only having a couple of drinks was to see if he could catch some sleep before what would be a very difficult work morning, correct? Yes. And you knew that in order for him to get any sleep, he couldn't stay at the waterfall very long, correct? Yes. And that's why he left early. Yes, he went home to rest. I, it, we didn't speak about whether or not he would be sleeping. Uh, it wouldn't shock you if he tried to go to sleep. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Uh, you stayed believing that uh, Tristan was going to try and rest and sleep, correct? Yes. And the plan when he left you was that you wouldn't see him again until after he was done with his plowing that morning, correct? That's incorrect. Okay. So... Is it your testimony that the plan from the beginning was that Tristan was going to drive from Canton to East and get some rest and then drive from Easton to Canton to pick you up so that he could take you back from Canton to Easton? That was the plan? It may not have been set in stone, but it was definitely spoken about. And then that's what ended up happening. Yes. Um, have you ever told anyone that before, Ms. Albert, that the plan from the start of the night was that Tristan was going to make four trips total from Canton to Easton, Easton to Canton, Canton to Easton? Have you ever told anyone that before? I don't remember if I mentioned that to anybody. That was the first time you've ever said that just now before this jury. Would you agree with that? I believe so. Almost two and a half years after January 29th, correct? Correct. Isn't it true that you decided at 1.45 in the morning that it was important for you to get home? At 1.45, around that time, is when Tristan picked me up, um, a little bit after that. But I didn't want to get snowed in at my parents' house. It was important for you to leave 34 Fairview, correct? I wouldn't say important, um, but it was something that I wanted to do, yes. It was important enough for you to leave, correct? Yes. And you made the decision to have Tristan drive from Easton to Canton to pick you up, correct? Yes. How far is it from Easton to Canton? From our apartment in Easton to 34 Fairview Road is about 18, 19 minutes. Okay, and that's when there's not a snowstorm on the side, correct? Correct. Yeah, where the um, where the defense lawyer is going because um, there was a story earlier that she was not at 
her mother's house after 12.30 in the evening or other 12, sometime between 12.15 and 12.30 that she was not at the house. It was later proven by the defense that yes, she was at the house, she stayed at the house and this was um, uh, corroborated with other witnesses that she was still at the house. And she stayed there till 1.45 a.m. in the morning on the 29th. And it was when she came out, there was nobody, when I said nobody, there was no person lying in the snow. Uh, there was, she noticed nothing unusual. When the boyfriend came to pick her up, she walked to the car, she got in, he drove up onto the driveway, saw nothing, and um, here we are. So, um, yet still, Karen Reed is accused of reversing her vehicle at uh, 25 miles an hour, ran into her boyfriend and left him there to die. So, obviously, again, here comes some great... Um, uh, cross-questioning to Caitlin Albert about her part when she was at the house on that night. Of course, in a major snowstorm, you, you certainly can't drive as carefree as you can when you're driving in good road conditions, correct? Right. Uh, and your boyfriend was making that trip multiple times that night, correct? Yes. When Tristan picked you up at 1.45 a.m., did you bring Chloe out of the house with you to take to your apartment? No. Okay. On January 29th of 2022, uh, you were there at your parents' house from around midnight until about 1.45? About a little bit after 1.45, yes. Okay, and during that span of time, almost two hours, uh, you never saw anyone pull up outside, correct? I personally did not. No, and you personally did not look out the window either, correct? No, I did not. And you personally never heard anything out of the ordinary outside, correct? That is correct. Right. You never heard any yelling, correct? That is correct. No screaming? Correct. Nothing smashing into anything else? Correct. No revving of tires? Correct. No noises outside. Correct. Nothing attracted your attention. Correct. You never saw any vehicle backup lights. Correct. You never saw any red lights outside. Correct. You heard zero evidence of anything that would lead you to conclude that there had been some type of car accident outside. Objection. Sustained. You can ask it differently, Mr. Moon. You didn't hear a car accident. Objection. Ask it differently. When you left 34 Fairview at 145, which door did you use? I think I walked out the front door. And the front door, um, could I have exhibit 66, Mr. Bates? With the court's permission, may that be sure. displayed? Um, do you recognize exhibit 66 as being a depiction of your house? Yes. Uh, the front door to your home, there are actually two of them, correct? Yes. And when, but when you say the front door, you're referring to the door that's lit up in that photo? Yes. You can <laughs> take that off the screen. Um, I'd like to ask you some questions about what you saw or didn't see within the first couple of seconds while you were stepping outside. Uh, coming out the front door of your house, you would agree with me that your parents' front lawn is directly in front of you, correct? Yes. Uh, by that time, snow had started to accumulate at 1.45 a.m., correct? Yes. Uh, against that white snow, did you see a black baseball cap? I did not. As you stepped out of the house, did you see a black sneaker? I did not. Did you see 45 pieces of red taillight plastic? I did not. No. Did you see one piece of red taillight plastic? I did not. Yeah, where are we at now? Because um, there's evidence that came in to say there was 45 pieces of um, brick light um, fragments left on the front of um, Brian Albert's house. And um, 
it seemed as though these fragments was not there on that morning when she came out. She didn't see them. She didn't see a body. She didn't see fragments. She didn't see a cap. She didn't find uh, one shoe because apparently um, the deceased, John O'Keefe, was missing one shoe on that morning. So she clearly didn't see anything. Also, the person that came to collect her didn't see anything. Um, yet still, as I have to say to again, Karen reads up for a murder, uh, accused by the prosecution that she reversed her car and smashed into her boyfriend and left him there to die. So this is clear evidence that um, there was nobody on nobody or no person on the front steps. Did you see a six foot two man on your parents' front lawn in front of you? Jackson. Did you? I did not. You saw nothing unusual on that front lawn of your parents' home, did you? I did not. Now, Tristan had parked in the driveway, correct? I believe so. When I say Tristan, I'm referring to Tristan Morris, who was your boyfriend, right? Yes. Um, as you face the house, that driveway is to the right, correct? Yes. And as you're coming out of the house, the driveway is to the left, which makes sense, right? Yes. Uh, where in the driveway was Tristan Morris parked? don't remember if he was on the left I, I, my guess would be the left side of the driveway because that would have been closest to me walking out of the house but I, I can't say for sure exactly where he was parked in the driveway in any case you walked to his vehicle correct yes and actually when i say his vehicle it was actually your vehicle right correct that was the jeep that you had at that time yes and as you were walking to that vehicle you would agree with me there were no obstructions between you and your parents front lawn correct correct and as you were walking to that vehicle, again, no baseball hat, no sneaker, no pieces of red taillight, and no six foot two man did you see on your parents' front lawn, correct? Correct. And there were no, um, strike that. Uh, after you got into the vehicle, uh, you got into the passenger's side? Yes. Uh, because you had been drinking that night, correct? Yes. And it wouldn't have made sense for you to drive home to Easton, correct? Correct. Uh, so Tristan Morris backed his or your Jeep out of the driveway, correct? Yes. And the tail end of that Jeep, when he backed out, would have gone toward Cedar Crest, correct? Correct. Which would mean that the car was now facing toward the Chapman Street side, correct? Yes. And that would mean that your Jeep being driven by Tristan, would have driven directly by your parents' full property line, correct? Correct. And you were on the passenger side of the car, correct? Correct. The passenger side was closest to your parents' front lawn as you were driving away, correct? Yes. And you drove past the front lawn, correct? Yes. You drove past the flagpole, correct? Yes. And in all that time from when Chris, Tristan Morris pulled out of the driveway and drove right by your parents' front lawn, you never saw anything of the things that I previously asked you about, correct? I did not, but I also was not looking. You saw no baseball hat, no sneaker, no pieces of red plastic, and no six-foot-two man, correct? Correct, but I also was not looking out my window. Okay. Let me ask you this. Did, did anybody in this courtroom ask you if you were looking out your window? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. That was an answer to a question that nobody asked you, correct? Objection. Sustained. Now, at this point, you would agree with me that you've essentially circled your parents' front lawn, right? Yes. Yeah, you, you came out the front door and were facing the front lawn, correct? Correct. Then you're walking to the left, which means that the front lawn is to your right, correct? Correct. Then you're backing up out of the driveway, which means the front lawn is still to your left, correct? Correct. And when Tristan pulled... I think this, uh, <laughs> this witness is so much under pressure, Caitlin Albert. Um, she's obviously being coached at what to say and how to say it and how to answer certain things. And of course, she's getting helped by the prosecution objecting and obviously the judge um, sustaining things. Um, but she clearly came out of that house, did not see nothing, 
uh, the car reversed out into the roadway, drove away, and you would, would have had to have your lights on, bright lights also in that sort of weather. And the snow was at that time probably three to four inches, it wasn't that high, and nothing was seen. Yeah, you know, so um, she is under a lot of pressure. I think she wants to be truthful, but um, <laughs> they colluded together, and not not all the time you can remember what was said to you to be to say. The car sits at the when Tristan Morris pulls the car such that the car is now operating parallel to your front line. Now the front line's to your right. Correct. Correct. And with regard to all of that time that you were circling that front lawn, you never saw anybody or anything out of the ordinary on that lawn, correct? I did not. And you also didn't see any tire tracks in the snow, did you? Not that I can remember. I may have a moment. Yes. No further questions, thank you. Okay. Lily? Yes, sir. Aunt Julie Albert, correct? Yes. And you just testified that that was about two or three years ago, correct? That was an estimate. I can't say for sure, but, but yes. It wasn't 10 years ago? No. Two or three years ago, so right now it's May 14th of 2024. Two years ago would be May 14th of 2022. Yes. Three years ago would have been May 14th of 2021, correct? Correct. Okay, you are all set, Ms. Albert. Thank you. There you go. That was Caitlin, Caitlin Albert, the uh, daughter of the Boston cop who owns that um, house that you can see behind me. Uh, I bet she's happy to be off the stands there because um, she was roasted <laughs> there by the uh, prosecution, Mr. Yanetti, doing a fantastic job there. And um, she's definitely, as I said, she definitely wasn't very comfortable at giving her evidence. And she, there was a lot of untruths there and um, trying to uh, distance herself from one of her school school friends, or university friends, I should say. But it was all brought out. So, um, this, could, this case continues to be a scandal, and obviously everyone in that house, I'm not sure everyone, but quite a few of them in that house has um, got a story that's not matching up. Someone is the instigator of um, putting them all together to say this, say that, to um, hopefully get Karen Reed sent down for a long time. I don't think that was meant, that's meant to happen, but the thing is, it's a lot of police and friends who is involved in this particular case, and the scapegoat is Karen Reed. Well, um, we've been going for one hour, 10 minutes now. Um, we've got a little bit over our time today. Uh, today, day 11, I, I will have another one coming up. It'll be day 12, very explosive one in day 12 coming up. So meanwhile, as I always say, show me love and I'll show you love. Subscribe, share, and let all your friends know about um, Citizen Hartley over here in London. Uh, five, I think it's five, 6,000 miles away from, um, or is it 4,000 miles away from Boston, Massachusetts small town called Kenton. This is where this um, accident was supposed to have taken place, or should I say this murder was supposed to have taken place by Karen Reed. As I said to you, uh, checking all the uh, comments related to this case, no one thinks she's guilty. They haven't heard any evidence as yet. All the evidence that's coming out so far is the, the house owners trying to defend their positions and who knows who in the house and who was there and who wasn't there and who's trying to hide away someone uh, from getting involved in the case. 
the plot goes on. Even though there is help coming from the judge and also the prosecution in this to the witnesses, the crime facts is definitely coming out. Well, I'm going to say bye-bye on uh, today. We had some beautiful days here in London, but now it seems to be raining and it's actually cold this morning. There was actually fog, very foggy morning. Couldn't see the um, homes and offices across from me. But um, that's the London weather for you, or, or they say British weather. Well, I'll appreciate any comments and don't forget, show me some love. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Until next time, out of here. Crime Vlog Weekly.